And so what do you do when someone comes in for that? Ah, very interesting. So first of all, you reassure the patient. You're not going to die. It's not a heart attack. It's your hormone. You know, one. It, it's not a heart attack. It's your hormone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and same with mood, by the way. Yeah. When a patient comes to me and says, my husband says, I have changed. I'm not so nice at home. I have short temper. So when we can talk about the mood in a minute, but I tell them, tell your husband, it's not me. It's my hormones. Okay. <laughs> okay. Put that on the hormones. Hi, I'm Mary Alice Haney. Today on the show, we're talking to Dr. Dominique Fraden Reed, one of the top doctors in the field of anti aging medicine. Ever wonder why some of Hollywood's biggest and brightest stars seem to be aging backward? Well, they're probably a client of Dr. Reed. Today, we're going to dive into the topic that is often overlooked in women's health perimenopause and menopause. And Dr. Reed is going to arm us with the anti aging tips and tricks she uses on her own patients. Thank you for tuning in to SheMD. This podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes only. It is not intended as a substitute for a physician's medical advice. You should regularly consult your medical provider in matters relating to your own health. Even though we share our honest beliefs on SheMD, some of the products and services we discuss may involve sponsorships or paid advertising. I am so excited to have you today, Dr. Reed. And for those of you out there that don't know who Dr. Reed is, when you see a celebrity in Hollywood who looks like she's aging backwards or he is aging backwards, it's probably because they're a client of Dr. Reed's. And you just are also the kindest, sweetest, most amazing. You're also my doctor. And this is why I look so fabulous, I've got to say. But I just, I'm so excited to have you because I, I want to talk about longevity and I want to talk about you know, your, your life's mission and your life's work. But I also really want to talk about a time in a woman's life that's not talked about very much, which is perimenopause. You're an expert in every stage of a woman's life in terms of longevity, but you really are a specialist, especially in perimenopause and menopause. And I know you have er women come into your office every day and they're like, help, am I in menopause? Am I in perimenopause? Does that happen a lot? That happens every moment of my life when I'm in my office. And thank you so much for inviting me. You're so, so nice to talk about that topic that is so important, you know, for a woman's life. And there are a lot of myths, a lot of unknown. And I hope I can bring a little something to the picture to help those millions of women who are going to go through the changes and don't expect to go through the trouble because it's a real trouble period of their life. And, but it doesn't have to be. And you and I talk about that sometimes. It can be a positive, amazing time of your life if you know what to do and, and you know, the tips and the tricks and the nutrition and all that. And we're going to dig really far into that. You are absolutely right. You know, menopause can be the most complex thing and it can be the simplest way to go through if you know what you expect, if you are taken care of by someone who knows how to deal with you because no one is the same. When we say in medicine, no one needs the, the same treatment that's in menopause more than ever, because one thing fits all doesn't apply. You know, everybody is different. Every woman will have different symptoms, will be at a different stage of their life. And we need to know what we're talking about. So I'm hoping to help you understand that. And I will tell you what my everyday life is. And I love it. I love it because when a woman comes to me and she's miserable and after a few months working together, you know, they come to me and they say, Dr. Reed, you saved my life. I said, no, you saved your life because I taught you uh, what to do. I told you uh, what was going to happen. And I educated you because education is really important. Mary. Exactly. And that's what we're trying to do on this podcast is, you know, not every woman lives in Los Angeles or can come see you. So we want today for you to give all the women out there watching and listening these, you know, these guidances and these tips and everything that you do for your patients. It's not easy to talk about cancer, yet knowing your family's history of cancer is a first step to understanding your own risk and may qualify you for genetic testing that can inform your way forward. My Risk Hereditary Cancer Test with Risk Score from Myriad Genetics is a powerful tool to help healthcare providers identify your risk of developing 11 different types of hereditary cancer. And Risk Score analyzes multiple factors to estimate the risk of developing breast cancer over the next five years and remaining lifetime. Learn more about my risk with Risk Score at getmyrisk.com. That's G E T M Y. R-I-S-K dot com. 
So I think let's start at the beginning, which is when we're growing up, we understand what puberty is. We understand what pregnancy is. And then you hit this time in your life and you're like, what is going on? All of a sudden I can't eat the same way I used to be. I can't, I'm not sleeping the same way. All of these things happen. So maybe start there. I'd like to start with a bit of definitions because there's a lot of confusion. No, what is menopause exactly? Menopause is an instant in life when you have 12 months behind where you had no period. Menopause, pause in your menorque. Menorque means having a cycle. So menopause is not a a transition, you know, it's just a moment. So what we have to discern is first pre-menopause. So pre-menopause is from the moment you had your first period until you come to these moments of change, of transition, where your periods are a bit irregular and you start having all kinds of symptoms. We're going to talk about that in a minute. So that is an easy period. We won't talk too much about that today because that's not the purpose of our meeting. Then you have the perimenopause, which is the period where everybody comes to me and most women are miserable. They're going to have vasomotor symptoms, they're going to have uh, digestive issues, they're going to have sleep issues, we're going to go in all the detail in a minute. And we know that uh, that period is going to last maybe five, eight euros, maybe more, okay, average. And it usually starts around 43, 45, sometimes earlier, can last until you know, 55, sometimes 60. I have a, a nice lady right now, she's 70, she still has some issues. Issues, okay, even though she is now in postmenopause. So postmenopause is the moment where after 12 months you didn't have your cycle anymore, meaning you don't have any eggs or ovules in your ovary anymore, and you won't never have a period. So premenopause, the transition, the perimenopause, and postmenopause. When a woman tells me, Am I in menopause? It doesn't mean much, you know, I'm in menopause, either you're peri, either you're post, but in doesn't mean sense. So let's talk about that late 30s, early 40s, you start feeling different. Things aren't working the same way. Is it a hormone issue? Is that what's causing it that your estrogen starts going? Like what's what's causing that? So around perimenopause, what happens Excuse me for saying that, but the eggs are not as good as the one you had when you were 25, Mary. Yeah. Okay. So these eggs are not going to be as productive in terms of estrogen to produce ovulation. It's getting a bit harder. And your FSH, the pituitary hormone, has to uh, invest a bit more into helping for that ovulation to happen. So you see your FSH go up. And that's where the trouble starts because FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, is also very close to the center of thermoregulation, your temperature. So these are the moments where you need to start having these hot flashes or these feeling hot, not knowing if you're cold and you take your sweater off and you take your sweater back. Okay, so, and that happens in my office quite a bit, okay? But so you're, you're sitting in your <laughs> office and you're like, I'm so hot. I got to take off my sweater. And I always laugh. I say, when you're really young and your eggs are fabulous and you've got all the hormones you need, you just trying so hard not to get pregnant. And then when it comes time for you to want to have a child, it's usually later when you've gotten your shit together, found the right partner, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and it's impossible to get pregnant. So it's just this crazy modern thing that's happening with women. Absolutely. I think it's a little bit normal. You know, we it's better to have healthy women to have a pregnancy. It's harder when we are older, but some women can be pregnant at an older age now. You right, that's happening a little bit. So to finish the story, so now we are at the moment where these eggs are not so good. So yes, so the ovary is going to stimulate by the FSH that is high. And at the beginning of the transition, the ovary responds by crazy uh, numbers of estrogen, crazy levels, sorry, of estrogen. And that makes you get to estrogen dominance. And estrogen dominance is going to cause a lot of issues, metabolic problems, weight gain in the midsection, being nervous, because estrogen are the hormones of excitement, but also anxiety. So if you have a lot of estrogen, that's what's causing it? So so the subtle um, definitions of perimenopause, you are a moving target. What I, that's what I tell to my patients. Okay. Because at the first, at the beginning, 
yes, your ovary responds to the FSH, to the pituitary. So you push tons of estrogen, you go to levels that are above the normal level. No, 400, I had patients at 700 of estrogen when normal, you know, go between 100 and 400 maxi. So during that follicular phase, suddenly you are overstimulated in order to try to ovulate, you know, that's the way to kick the ovule out of your ovary by putting more estrogen. So walk through a woman, uh, I know one, yeah. 40s, yeah. late 30s, 40s comes in and she says, Dr. Reed, I have gained weight all of a sudden. I can't sleep anymore. I'm so anxious. I feel like I'm going crazy. What do you do? I think that you first need to be a clinician. To be a good hormone doctor, like they call me sometimes, you don't need to rush on labs first. You want to have a full description of the woman's symptoms because you can almost make your assumptions um, by asking questions. So I'm going to ask you, so you sleep not very well. You put weight on. Do you have hot flashes already or not too much? Mm-hmm. Not too much, probably, because oh, you're... Not too much. Okay. I don't. Yeah, because you still have your estrogen pretty mm-hmm. good. You are at the beginning of the changes, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. So how is your energy in life? Do you feel a little bit depressed? Do you feel... Exhausted. You feel exhausted all the time, okay? Mm-hmm. Because first of all, you don't sleep, okay? Mm-hmm. So how are your cycles? Because that's also an important They're point. They're regular right now. They're still regular. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. So your ovary is still able to produce probably estrogen at the right mm-hmm. level, mm-hmm. but... Your progesterone might be a little bit on the low side. Progesterone is the hormone of feeling calm, sleeping well, not being anxious. Do you have a little bit of palpitation, a little bit of cardiovascular issues? No. No, not yet. Okay. So really at the very beginning. So you have the change, the metabolic changes that go with hormone imbalance. And quite often it's excess estrogen. You know, estrogen makes you feel like a sponge. You retain water. That's why you, your skin is beautiful. Okay, you get very hydrated, but at the same time, it can change your insulin sensitivity. You can become a bit more insulin resistant. And then you're going to start by having those initial symptoms, weight gain and sleep, a bit of anxiety. So wait, let me ask you that. That's an important thing to say. Two things come to my mind. You said it before that you it's hard to test hormones in this stage because at one moment your estrogen could be through the roof and then it goes down and then it's here and then it's there and your progesterone, you're a moving target. Yeah. So it's really about your symptoms. You have to really look at your symptoms and that's going to tell you what you need to do in terms of treatment. Yes and no, darling. Yes and no. On the one hand, you have a lot of indication just by asking the patient, Mm -hmm. but then you need to do three tests. I personally do three tests. Okay. I don't do fancy tests, you know, like the Dutch test. I think that doesn't really bring that much to the picture. It complicates things. The test can be very simple. You do a test at day three to five. That's going to tell you, is your FSH pushing a little bit more than when you were 25? Normally, you know, when you're 25, you're at five. You go to seven sometimes when you get a bit older. But if you're already at 20 in your FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, that means, haha, the pituitary has to push more. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, at that moment, you have low estrogen because it's just the beginning of the cycle. Mm -hmm. I like to do a test at around ovulation. So what what day of the Maybe day 12. And so this woman, do you give her metformin? Do you do peptides? Like, what's your what's your secret sauce? Aha. So being French, as you know, metformin is one of my favorite uh, medications. When I was in medical school, we were already prescribing it as a diabetic, anti-diabetic medication. And, and it's, uh, it's FDA approved for diabetes. It's fully approved for diabetic people. But... Uh, what was very interesting, all these people were losing weight. And since then, there's a lot of studies that have been um, done essentially in Europe, a little bit more here also recently. There's a study going on. It's called the TAME trial. The TAME trial. Yeah. Yeah. So the TAME trial will really tell us all the benefits of metformin. Uh, you know, as a trial, you know, there's always some risk that it will not prove fully what has been described for years. But to my sense, it's a very interesting drug to take because it protects against what could called the chronic illnesses, illnesses that comes with age. So it seems to protect against the risk of cancer, 
uh, breast cancer and prostate cancer in particular. It seems to protect against Alzheimer. I am very much into brain protection, and that's one that I have taken myself you now for probably 20 years now. And you gave that to me because I have a history yeah. of brain disease in my family. So you, that was one thing that you said. You really, yeah. and you said, I give it to my parents, I take it, Absolutely. and you feel very, you know. 100%. You yeah. know, as I can tell you, my dad had prostate cancer, and uh, he lived until 95. He just passed away last fall, and he was on metformin uh, all his life. And I think that helped him stay uh, good because he, he liked sugar. You know, when someone likes sugar, that also helps having sometimes a little treat without um, having big consequences. Mm-hmm. So metformin for sure. Okay. But I'd like to go to the second phase of the transition because okay. this is very interesting. At one point, you know, the, the ovary is not going to respond to that FSH stimulation. So now we have a woman, very nice, that says, you know what, I'm so apathic. I have zero energy. I have wrinkles. My hair is starting to fall like crazy. My What's going on? My skin starts getting thin. Your skin, skin, yeah. Exactly. So most of the time, you don't have... At that moment, you know, at 12 days, the peak of estrogen anymore. You you have very little estrogen. And often, there's no ovulation. And then are you, you're not having regular periods at this point? So at that point, you, even before you could have a little bit irregular cycle, you could skip one month here and there. But now for sure, you are not ovulating at all. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what happens those ovules, you know, you still have a few eggs, not good quality. They want to compete to get out every month, but they get stuck. So and I'm talking in very simple terms, but those eggs, they are in your ovary in the form of a cyst. Because okay. each month, you know, two or three try to exit. They can't. So you have pain in your lower abdomen. You wonder what it is. I went twice when I was 48 myself to my OBGYN with horrible lower quadrant pain on my left side, thinking I had something strange with my appendix. Okay. Could be my could not be my appendix because I had been operated when I was 10 years old. So it was certainly not that. Okay. But some women could confuse be confused. So it is very frequent that you have no ovulation and a cyst. So nothing to worry. In general, those cysts, they finally disappear by themselves, okay? But they can be painful. So no ovulation (laughs) means no period. Mm -hmm. And no period means no progesterone. So now you are depleted in estrogen. You are depleted on progesterone. You have no hormones. And then the myriad of symptoms, you know, cardiovascular issues. I had a woman who had basically high low density lipoprotein. That's the bad cholesterol, darling. Right. Okay, the well, bad and cholesterol. I have a sister that started to get heart issues. Like yeah. her, her blood pressure started going up and all this. And we don't have heart disease in our family at all. So that seemed strange. Yeah. So this is because, you know, hormones help use the bad cholesterol. If we were in my office, I would show you the chart. You know, the LDL is the precursor of progesterone and estrogen. Mm -hmm. Once you don't need to produce progesterone and estrogen, you pile up your cholesterol, okay? It happened to me, especially if you have the genes, so you need to be even more careful with what you eat in terms of cardiovascular disease prevention. Then you start having palpitation. I remember when I have one of my dear patients, she was in my office every two days. Dr. Reed, Dr. Reed, I have a heart attack. I said, no, 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 it's not a heart attack. It's a panic attack. And I would listen to her heart and her heart was beating at 120 per minute. Okay. Just because of that imbalance in hormones that can cause some irregularity in the rhythm. The and so what do you do when someone comes in for that? Ah, very interesting. So first of all, you reassure the patient. Mm-hmm. You're not going to die. It's not a heart attack. It's your hormone. You know, one th- It's not a heart attack. It's your hormone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and same with mood, by the way. Yeah. When a patient comes to me and says, my husband says, I have change. I'm not so nice at home. I have short temper. So and we can talk about the mood in a minute. But I tell them, tell your husband... It's not me, it's my hormones. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Put that on the hormones. So the cardiovascular system is very dependent, you know, on balancing estrogen, progesterone. These hormones are uh, relaxing the arteries. And so, as I say, they increase the cholesterol if they are not there anymore. So that poor lady, to come back to her, and I love her dearly, we talked so many times though in my office, I would reassure her. Interestingly enough, within half an hour, she would have 
a lower heart rate, mm -hmm. proving <laughs> to her that that was really yeah. more, you know, an emotional reaction. Yeah. So you also can give them a bit of propranolol. Propranolol is a mild beta blocker. A lot of people use it when they talk in public. I didn't take it today because I'm very at ease with you. But mm -hmm. if I talk uh, to a big crowd, sometimes I take it myself. A lot of actors take it. You mm -hmm. know, it's a beta blocker. And it calms down the effect of adrenaline, okay, which is one of the... Um, Catecholamine means uh, the, um, uh, the, I would say, the compound that makes your heart beat too fast that we produce. When I decided to overhaul my diet and really focus on my health, I started looking at every aspect about how I prepare my food, including what I cook it in. I wanted to make sure I was not only buying organic, clean ingredients, but also using non-toxic cookware. It's not just about eating healthy ingredients, it's about cooking them in a way that preserves their goodness. That's why I love Caraway. Caraway products are made without any toxic materials like PFAS, PTFE, PFOA, or other hard to pronounce chemicals so I can have peace of mind when I'm cooking. And I love the range of colors they have. I went with a sunny yellow that instantly brightens up my kitchen and actually makes me excited to cook. Plus, with a non-stick ceramic surface, I hardly have to use any butter or oil and it makes cleanup so much easier. As a reminder, their iconic cookware set comes with a saute pan, fry pan, Dutch oven, and saucepan, plus lids for all of them, a canvas lid holder, and magnetic pan rack for storage. It's the ultimate kitchen setup and will save you $150 versus buying the items individually. Plus, if you visit carawayhome.com slash shemd, you can take an additional 10% off the next purchase. This deal is exclusive for our listeners, so visit carawayhome.com slash shemd or use code shemd at checkout. Caraway, non-toxic cookware made modern. You know, as I've gotten older, I've come to appreciate the importance of quality time in everything, especially when it comes to my sleep. And if you're like me and you're also experiencing the joys of perimenopause, I'm willing to bet you're also dealing with those frustrating night sweats. And now that it's summer, that's certainly not helping. That's why I'm so glad I discovered Brooklinen Sheets. Brooklinen helps me stay cool and comfortable throughout the night and has made a huge difference in how I sleep. And I love how durable their products are. They keep getting better with every wash, which is perfect for a house full of kids. If you're looking for an upgrade in your sleep experience, Brooklinen is definitely the way to go. They have a bunch of different colors and styles to choose from, and it's such an easy way to refresh and revamp your room. There's truly nothing better than a good pair of sheets for a good night's sleep. So get the lightweight essentials necessary to upgrade your space for the summer at brooklinen.com and use promo code SHEMD for 20% off your purchase of $100 or more. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N dot C-O-M. Or if you're the type of person that likes to feel your sheets, come in store. But if you fix the hormones and you level them, this goes usually goes away? 100%. Okay. It's really funny. Sometimes you have to use both. Uh, something that I love to use is L-theonine. Have you heard about that? Mm -hmm. So L-theonine is a precursor, it's an amino acid, precursor of the GABA aminobutyric acid, GABA. So that is a neurotransmitter in the brain that is very important to stay calm, relax, you know, nothing to worry, domani fera giorno, enjoy the moment. So that neurotransmitter talks to hormones or hormones talk, talk to neurotransmitters. And during the changes of hormones, the transition, there's a chaos in the brain. And we can talk about the mood if you'd like mm -hmm. now. Yes, yes, please. Because I think the mood is something, it's so funny as a woman, you, you have children, there's a lot of stress with that. But I do think during this time, it's just all of a sudden you're, you, and I remember it with my own mother. I, I remember noticing it where she was just so much more snappy. And by the way, that generation didn't go on hormones at all no. because they were so scared from the trial. Absolutely. So basically, um, the, the mood change. So the mood change is one of the f very early symptoms that women will experience. So anxiety, depression, mm -hmm. a short temper, as you say. Mm -hmm. And that's because there's a direct connection between the neuroendocrine system, that means the neurotransmitter in your mm -hmm. brain, and the hormones. We know that hormones like estrogen increase the dopamine stimulation. So motivation, dopamine is a hormone of pleasure, doing things, you no know, ac action, mm -hmm. action. So you have less motivation. You know, I, I have a few women that came to me, Dr. Reed, I don't want to do anything anymore. 
I used to to be full of life projects. Uh, uh, it's not myself. I'm not myself. Okay, so I tell them, okay, let's see where we are in the changes, and then we can probably help you. And then they come back the next year, and maybe they have a new boyfriend, or who knows? Who knows? So, they, so really, you can fix all of this with hormones. These. So I would not be presumptuous to say you can fix everything, right. but you can improve. A lot, dear. Okay, and what breaks my heart is when I see these women, you know, hear what someone tells in the family or their, their best friend. Go see a psychiatrist. Right. You have mood issue? No, don't go to the psychiatrist. Go to a good hormone doctor and first try to fix your hormones because maybe it's just that you know, and you don't need to go on sertraline or any kind of Wellbutrin or that's mm-hmm. going to sometimes make it worse and and hook you to a medication that now it's going to be hard to stop. What I use sometimes with um, actually great success, and, and I take it myself for mood balance. You never know. So it's the lithium, not the lithium that you give. Oh, to I was like <laughs> lithium, not the lithium for bipolar people. Mm-hmm. The supplement, Mary, supplement. It's very small capsule, five milligram of lithium. It's a natural supplement you can buy over the counter. And well, we'll have that. We're going to have a link to that on, on the site for sure. Yeah, it, it's, it's a miracle supplement because it has some mood balance properties. Okay. It helps with focus attention. It was actually recognized at a conference in London last year as brain protector. Oh, okay. And population who works in zones where there's a lot of lithium in the water, for example, they seem to have less uh, cognitive decline. And so spell it for me. L-I-T-H-I-U-M. Lithium. Okay. okay. So it's a, but it's a supplement. It's, it's not to be no, confused with the bipolar medicine. N- absolutely right? not. Okay, okay right. five milligram over the counter. Uh, as I say, I have been taking that myself because, again, I'm very brain. protection for the brain. Okay. And what about those women that have cancer and those women that don't want to just, for whatever reason, don't want to get, get on HRT? Yeah. What do you do for those patients? That's a tough call. That's a tough call, but it's evolving. It's evolving in the sense that recently I had two oncologists that uh, call me and say, you can give hormones to my lady. No, as long as you're five years past and uh, you maybe didn't have too much of estrogen positive cells in mm-hmm. your breasts, you know, or progesterone positive also. So that's something that is very delicate. Uh, I had one of these women that sent was sent to me by the oncologist because she was miserable. She was dripping in my office. You know, she had been put on tamoxifen for a few years and all her estrogen went down, of course. okay, uh, She was having a lot of estrogen deficiency. And even past the, the five years of tamoxifen, she was still having these vasomotor symptoms right. like crazy, not sleeping at night. She was exhausted. She came to me. She had bags under her eyes. She said, Dr. Reed, I can't live like that. My quality of life is really n- not non-existent, okay? So the oncologist had contacted me. She's a very nice lady. I work with her a lot. And she said, Dominique, put her on a small dose of bioidentical hormone. Mm-hmm. And that's where that's interesting to work with um, these bioidentical hormones because you can really adjust them at the lowest level possible, you know, from company pharmacies, you need to work with very good company pharmacies. Well, I was going to say, you have to work with very good Absolutely. company pharmacies. And I personally never give estrogen by mouth because of the risk of clotting okay. and the risk of the cardiovascular system. Do you try to give everyone bioidentical or does it matter? So everything that I give is always bioidentical, darling. Always, okay? Whether it goes through regular pharmacy and that's going to be my French estrogel, I, can, I don't mm-hmm. know if I can say it, yeah. because I love it. I have used it myself since I was 49, you know, uh-huh. when I had the changes. And um, basically, this is a gel that you apply on, on your skin mm-hmm. every night. And uh, again, you know, depending on where you are, the dosage will vary. Then there's a patch, and the patch is very easy. The mm-hmm. patch, you have 0.025 up to 0.1, you know, so you have a large array of dosage you can use, and the patch you use twice a week, and, but it's mm-hmm. still bioidentical. But right. And then you have the compounding formulas that you have a bit more ability to um, to change the dosage and play with that. So, And it's a click-click, you know, what's called toppy click. Mm-hmm. And it's a cream that women are going to apply also uh, on their body. Sometimes I use the troche. 
troqué is a little form of hormone you put underneath your tongue. Oh, I yeah. haven't even heard about that yeah, one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it goes to your saliva. You don't want to take anything by mouth because it would go through the liver. Right. And then it disturbs the clotting factors and there's a higher risk of clot. Okay. If you're in perimenopause, can you overdose on estrogen? If you put, how do you know if you have too much estrogen? Very good question. This is very, very and important. And progesterone. How do you know if you yeah. have too much estrogen? And like if you're trying to figure out your dosage. Yeah. So that's what I call being a chef. You know, in, in, in gastronomy, if you have four stars of the Michelin guide, that means you know how to cook. So for us, it's the same thing. If you have expertise, if you have done that for quite a while, you know how to dose each woman. So let me tell you, in general, by asking all these questions, like I said, you have a feeling that woman, mm, she is still in that moment of her life where she's in oestrogen dominance. Okay. I do the 12-day test. It proved me right. I ask her, hey, were you a little bit sensitive to the birth control pill before, Mary? I wasn't. You wasn't. Okay, good. So you are not too sensitive to hormones, so maybe I'll be a little bit more uh, generous with my dosage with you. Mm -hmm. If you are very sensitive when you were young to any kind of hormones, if you, when you were pregnant, you know, and they gave you hormones, it was terrible. Or if you had to do fertility treatment and you hated those doses of hormone, Let's be careful. We have to be gentle. So, so at the beginning of the transition, the problem is if you give estrogen, you are going to make it worse. So you have to wait until now. We know that the woman is low in estrogen, mm -hmm. but start relatively early. Don't wait until you are in full menopause when there's zero estrogen. What I call zero means undetectable in the blood. So start in perimenopause. Start in perimenopause. You know why? Because... First of all, it's going to help with a lot of symptoms, but more than anything else, for me, what is important, it protects your brain. Right. And oh. your heart, I've heard. Absolutely. Okay. You're absolutely right. Okay. But there's several new studies, and I was going to talk to you a bit more in detail, and I know you have a specialist that will talk about it, but several studies that show how estrogen given at a relatively early stage, when it's needed, not before, is going to protect acetylcholine. Acetylcholine, it's the neurotransmitter of brain cognitive function. Uh, people who have Alzheimer have low acetylcholine. We treat them with acetylcholine. Dopamine also, okay? So those neurotransmitters, they go very, very quickly and it's irreversible. You know, the neurons right. do not like to be uh, non-supported uh, by estrogen. So start treating early. And second, you are going to also have so much better uh, improvement on sleep, on other symptoms. But don't forget progesterone. Exactly. Don't okay. forget. Well, and it is true that it, are there twice as many women that have Alzheimer's than men? Absolutely. And well, that, yeah. I mean, it could be correlated to hormones. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. You're absolutely so right. just taking it at a, this stage is preventative. So it's even, it's it's not so much the symptoms but then it's, it's, like you said, it's like a chef. How much do you take? Is there a little bit? Is it, you know, it's like put a little bit of that in, take it away, see what it does, bring it back. So you really have to work with your doctor to find what the right dosage is, really. It's fine tuning. And what I always say to my um, patients, I hope I am going to find the right dosage right away. But we are partners now. We are okay. partners. Most of them, they have my cell phone or they have connection with my team because they can change. You know, in one day, their ovary can wake up all of a sudden. There's something that I, I like to call the swan song. So a woman that comes to me and uh, no more estrogen, FSH at 100, you think it's done. Okay. So now it's full menopause. You know, when you have a, an FSH above 70 and zero estrogen, when I say zero, that means below five, you can tell maybe we have now turned towards menopause. So you put a good amount of estrogen on board, you know, the patch, you put your progesterone if they have a uterus, of course, to protect the lining. And then suddenly that woman, I have one in particular in mind, she calls me, she was in Bali and she said, I can't stand it. My breast is twice double. I now have these symptoms. I mean, to have a period and then two days later, she's bleeding like crazy. What happened? There were maybe a few eggs left in her ovary and she was not fully, fully in menopause and the ovary has kicked back in. So I said, stop, stop, stop everything and let's wait a little bit. 
So for three, four months, she was still having regular cycle and then it stopped, of course. So, you know, the swan before dying. The swan song. <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about some longevity secrets too. Uh, One more thing I want to ask you, because we've talked about this, intermittent fasting. You have told me, I, I came to your office and I, and I was sort of telling you what I was doing. And you said, I don't recommend intermittent fasting for women in menopause. So will you explain that? So it, and the same is true for perimenopause? So I mean to tell you, I have evolved in my uh, directions. I hate intermittent fasting. I'm repeating. Okay. I hate intermittent fasting. I don't know if you saw the recent study that people who do intermittent fasting uh, 14, 16 hours, they have 91% higher risk of cardiac uh, issues when they get older. Did you see that study? No, I didn't see that. Brand new, like I think in March. So it's not good for anyone there, okay? So why it's not good for women in particular at that moment of their life? One important thing that is important is to preserve your muscle mass when you turn into mm -hmm. menopause, mm -hmm. to avoid frailty mm -hmm. when you get to 80, where you have no muscle mass, you are really, really uh, weak, you know, so you need to have enough protein in your diet. There's something that is important, the caloric intake and the protein the intake, protein. they go together. There's a minimum protein intake to preserve your muscle mass that you need to have. You cannot have that in two meals. It's very hard, especially women who eat like a bird. How are they going to have, you know, maybe their 60 grams of protein if they are like 120 pounds? That's usually what I recommend to preserve a good muscle mass, good skin, good hair. You know, my last newsletter was about uh, hair loss. Yeah. Why do women lose hair loss at menopause? Yes, hormone change, but protein too low, protein in your diet. So protein, protein, protein. And there's no way you will can you can have enough protein if you do intermittent fasting because there's a limit of the absorption. In two meals, you will not absorb that. So low protein, low muscle mass, what happens? Low metabolic basal rate. You know, your basal metabolic rate goes down because you don't burn at rest anymore. And then you're going to be running after your weight because the less you eat, the less you burn and the less you need to eat. So it's a vicious cycle. Hmm. Okay. See, I know. <laughs> I, I wanted to make sure because I remember I went in there. I'm like, I'm intermittent fasting. Da, da. And you were like, let me tell you. No, yeah. I don't want you to do that. So what are the things I, I'd love to talk about, you know, the insulin resistance, peptides, you know, what you do in terms of, of all of that, you know, is it, is it Ozempic? Is it like, wh like, what do you like to do with a person that comes in? Yeah. Is so it a, a supplement? This new glucagon like peptide, whether it's- Wait, Explain what a peptide is. Ah, oh, a peptide. Peptide, it's a small protein. It's amino acids put together mm -hmm. in a certain shape that have a mission in your body. So you have hundreds of peptides that exist. Some of them are already marketed by the uh, and FDA approved, you no, know, like semaglutide and tirzepatide, and they are insulin resistant peptide that helps with weight, but there are other peptides, okay? But let's focus on the one for weight loss right now. If you put someone on one of these peptides or or one of these GLP-1 Inhibitors. Is that what they're called? GLP-1? GL GLP-1 uh, peptide. Actually. Yeah. So if you put someone on a GLP-1 peptide that's going to help them lose weight and stop the sugar cravings, what are you also telling them to do? So I tell them, look at my food plan that I'm giving you. And okay. I print that immediately. And it's written in my note, diet, explain, and given. Okay. Because this is the clue. You know, uh, the Ozempic face and all this bad press yeah. that we see, that's because patients abuse and do intermittent fasting, skip meals. Um, after my patients want to skip meals, I say, neighbor skip meal. Breakfast needs to exist, even if it's only two eggs or, you know, for breakfast, I had this morning yogurt and blueberries, and I put a little bit of protein powder in my yogurt mm -hmm. so that I had 25 grams of protein right okay. away. Okay. So definitely that first class, you know, the semaglutide mm -hmm. plays a role in the brain to keep you less hungry. Also in your muscle to burn more sugar. So you are more effective if you are going to exercise. So I encourage patients to do their exercise and they will burn a bit more. And weight-bearing exercise is really important. Yeah, for the muscle mm -hmm. support. You're absolutely right. But also aerobic to lose a bit right. of fat, okay? Right, 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 right. So you need both. But you're absolutely right. And then uh, the, the second generation, so the tirzepatide, 
I like that one a little bit better because it has a second action. It works on the GIP receptors in the gut, mm -hmm. meaning, you know, when you have that visceral fat that is yeah. right there. So it has a lipolytic action. That means uh, it helps destroy the fat in the belly. It is uh, good for fatty liver. It seems to be helping. And I am taking a little dose of tirzepatide myself. Yeah, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you a secret here, because it is also helping with cholesterol. Bon Charge is a holistic wellness brand with a huge range of evidence-based products to optimize your life in every way. Founded on science and inspired by nature, all Bon Charge's products adopt ancestral ways of living in our modern day world. Their extensive range of premium wellness products helps you sleep better, perform better, have more energy, recover faster, balance hormones, and reduce inflammation. The list is endless. From blue light glasses to red light therapy to EMF management and circadian friendly lighting, Bon Charge's products help you naturally address the issues of our modern day way of life. I started off my career as a West Coast editor of Allure magazine and got to try so many products, peels and lasers. I thought the deeper the laser, the more active the ingredient, the better. However, as I've gotten older, I noticed that I need to find more gentle solutions. I found Bond Charge and love their red light therapy. One of my best friends told me about it and I always listen to everything she says. I use it 10 to 20 minutes each day and I'm really noticing a difference. I can switch between both NIR and red light in one device. Bond Charge's products are HSA, FSA eligible and customers can receive an additional 40% off if they use their flexible spending account. Go to bondcharge.com and use coupon code SHEMD to save 15%. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E.com and use coupon code SHEMD to save 15%. For every woman listening right now, what do you recommend for longevity for any woman at any age? What are some uh, of the tips and the tricks that you give your celebrity so clients? This is a tough question because okay. again, one fits all. Okay. It's not okay. my theory. Okay. okay. I, is there a test? Is there a supplement you think every woman should do should take? You know, what what So I think I'm going to go back to personalized medicine. Okay. You come to me mm -hmm. and I'm going to say What are your risks? I mean, to do a full assessment of your risk because longevity starts with uh, prevention of what you probably have inherited from your parents, uh, prevention of what you might be doing not so good in your lifestyle. So let's work first at that level. It's easy. Okay. Lifestyle changes, diet, nutrition, exercise, stress management, which is a big one, especially uh, in our civilization. Okay, stress management. Stress is a silent killer. Okay, so we, we talk about that. So that's the baseline of my medicine. Then I say, okay, Mary, do you have other goals? You want to stay performant with your brain. You want to stay performant with your body, okay? So we have options. And I can tell you, <laughs> I won't have time to explain everything today because it's... <laughs> I know we need you on five more times. There are so many, but I would say the number one thing is vitality. Vitality. Okay, vitality. To age beautifully... If you keep your core energy, your vitality, you always have reached the, the, the minimum that is necessary to go further. So how can I help your energy? So we have some good peptides, okay? Uh, the, I, I'm going to tell you another secret about myself. <laughs> I inject myself with a peptide that is called SS31. SS31. So peptides are injected. Peptide, yeah. So most peptides are injected because they are destroyed by the stomach. You know, like okay. any uh, amino acid chain, mm -hmm. they have a certain shape. And if you destroy that shape, they won't be able to fit in the receptor, mm -hmm. so they won't do the same job. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's something I want to point out. I'm, I'm going just a little bit on, on the side here, but some women put their collagen peptide in hot tea or hot coffee. Don't do that because it destroys it. it destroys, you denaturate your protein. You know, you, you, the chain that has a certain shape becomes a kind of a filament and it will not do the same thing. So that was a bit of... Um, so ladies, if you're taking collagen and you're putting it in your smoothie, hot. that's good. But yes. if you're putting it in your coffee, that's that, bad because it if destroys it. If it's hot coffee. 
if it's, it's hot coffee. Yeah. Okay, so to come back, so that SS31 goes at the mitochondria. The mitochondria mm -hmm. is really the essence of power. That's where you build your ATP, you know, the, the molecule of energy. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be too, too, too uh, scientific here, but it's like starting your car, you know, the, the cardiolipin in the body. It's the energy at its source. So when I take that peptide, if I have long hours, sometimes I work like 12, 13 hours in my office, right. it really helps me. The days that I have less, you know, to do, I don't take it. I didn't take it this morning. It was more relaxing to come to you. <laughs> so, but um, that's one thing. So SS31 is a fabulous peptide. I want to talk about one patient of mine that is a very nice gentleman, 73 years old, I think, came to me two years ago with six months to live, cardiac failure and renal insufficiency. His, his son, who is one of my very good friends, says, you know, Dominique, I'm, I'm really, really destroyed because daddy is not doing good. You know, it, we were at UCLA this morning and that's the story. So I said, well, why don't we try your daddy on that SS31, okay, and see what happens? Well, believe it or not, daddy is still with us. And he went to Disneyland on a little scooter with the uh, grandkids at Christmas. So it's just a matter of everyone's different. It's, it's like what you're saying. And, so, and we have these tools in our toolbox. If you find a, a doctor that knows what they're doing. And I mean, that's also, if for the women listening that can't see you, because everyone can't see you, yeah, of course. what do you recommend? So all these peptides, you need to be educated. It's a little bit, of course, um, out of the standard of care. Okay. It's not FDA approved. Again, you know, I teach at Loma Linda. I am very, very uh, safe in what I do. I look for studies. I will not be a cowboy to give to patients things that would be dangerous. You know, first, do no harm. That's my motto. So I really try to keep my patients safe. You know, I refuse to go to give growth hormone to young people. That thing, that's a big mistake. So that's where I stand. But uh, in terms of what anybody can do, some supplements are very affordable and you can find them online. And so for example, that little L-theanine, we talk about lithium. Um, I love the precursors of um, NAD, you know, mm -hmm. nicotine, adenine, dinucleotide, NAD. It's basically a major um, anti-aging agent that we normally have in our body at a high level when we are... 25, 30 years old, and then declines with age. So all of us can benefit from a little support on that side by taking something that is called NMN, nicotinamine mononucleotide, which is a precursor of that NAD. And it will boost a little bit your energy. It will protect your brain. It is also something that helps with the brain-derived neurotropic factor. Sorry for all these terms, but it's basically uh, what nourishes our neurons. Okay. So the BDNF in our brain is very important to, to stay uh, alert and intelligent as we get older. That's what I tell my, my patients. I want to stay intelligent as I age. And that NMN seems to help. There's a new one also that I love also for brain protection. It's called plasmalogen neuro. Plasmalogen, plasmalogen neuro. Okay. It's something that has been studied in early Alzheimer patients. And it's very interesting. It is a synthetic molecule now, but it mimics what you find in scallops. Scallops are very intelligent animals. They move along. They mm -hmm. move a lot. You know, they, they, they have a lot of neurons. So they need to support all that energy. And definitely, I'm, I'm joking a little bit here, but this is something that I have found very helpful for two or three of my patients who had early stage Alzheimer. Uh, one of my dear patients, I've known her for probably almost 20 years now. When I was a resident at Loma Linda, she was already my patient. And um, that was the mummy. And the daughter is coming to me now, and mommy has early stage Alzheimer. And Chris, the, the daughter, was in my office last week. She purchased 10 bottles of that. You know, Loma Linda is a bit far from my office, yeah. and she doesn't want to do the drive. Her mom has been really stable after taking that product. How long can women be on hormone replacement therapy? Even at, do they, you keep your patients after menopause? How long do you keep them on? So this topic is very changing, okay? The one thing that we know is that in terms of cancer risk, the cancer risk increases a bit 
more as you get older because your cells are not as healthy in mm -hmm. general in your body. But to tell you the truth, the benefit are very important. You know, on your bones, we didn't talk about osteoporosis, but in order to help you know, stay uh, at a level of density uh, in your calcium, in your bone, estrogen are very important. So it's going to depend on what the woman wants to do. I mm -hmm. personally intend to continue my hormones until I die, if I can. Okay. okay, because it will protect my brain, as we talked about. It will protect my bone. It will help with my vitality. When I go in the morning in my garage, I'm full of life. I'm ready to go. I don't know how it would go if I didn't have my hormones. Mm -hmm. So this is very important for me. The quality of life prevails. But there's always the cancer the risk. risk, your mm -hmm. family risk. So everyone is a bit different. And some women are a bit afraid of cancer, what I, I want to tell you is that if you drink one glass of wine at night, your cancer risk might be higher than a low dose of hormone for the rest of your life. Well, okay, then that leads me to this. Alcohol, women and alcohol. You constantly tell me that is the worst thing that you can do is, is alcohol. And you're French. So the fact that you're telling me that. So what do you recommend for your clients? So I don't want to appear like... Um, um, <laughs> a monk, you know, in, in a monastery. But I definitely think that uh, alcohol needs to be um, ingested at a reasonable level, okay? And especially when women get older, the detox process of the body uh, are not as good, as fast. So I would say, you know, if you have one glass uh, three, four days a week, that's okay. You need to enjoy life. You know, again, you know, uh, I'm not here to say uh, uh, take everything that is good in your life out. You know, that's not possible. But be careful because that's true that hormones and, and alcohol, they increase the risk. So if you want to go on hormones, you will have two, two risks. Well, and I also have noticed as I've gotten older that alcohol affects me so much. I mean, sure. I, I get... I can have one glass of wine and wake up and feel like I've been hit by a truck where I used to be able to yeah. dance the night away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm French, as you say. Uh, I won't go into the reason why I don't drink. You know, it was uh, very early in life when I was in residency in France at the age of 23 that I saw too many alcoholics and I had to do ascites, puncture constantly. Uh, I, it was like a trauma, uh, so I never drank in my life. But I don't uh, expect everyone to be like me, okay? Mm -hmm. Just moderation. You're just incredible. I could sit here and talk to you for hours and hours and hours and hours. I think what I want to, to end with is two things. For every woman going through, or they think they're going through, perimenopause, give me five things they should do, whether it's a test or a vitamin. First, do not worry. You're not alone. Okay. Very important. Half the population is going to go through or is going through what you're going through. Absolutely. Second, okay. Look at your lifestyle, darling. I always say, let's figure out what can make it worse. If you eat too much sugar, if you're under crazy stress, you know, if you don't exercise, if you don't go to bed uh, at a decent hour. So let's work on the lifestyle first. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second, find at which state you are. As I said, you know, there are different levels of perimenopause. Do you have high estrogen, low estrogen? Where is your progesterone? So yes, do a test. Don't come to my office saying, what is my test doing? Okay, because I will never look at the test first. Okay, test will come after you tell me your, your story. Tell me your story first. Okay. And then Again, you know, as you say, try to find a doctor that is educated. There are quite a few doctors that go to the training, you know, and definitely... What kind of training do they need? So OBGYN, you know, I know that um, Dr. Thais uh, Ali Abadi is well trained, for example, yes. I can tell you. Some OBGYN know, do know, but some OBGYN are more pelvic exam specialist mm -hmm. or OBGYN uh, babies, uh, mm -hmm. no specialist, but they don't know much about hormones. I'm sorry to say that. Mike, I hope so. What would be the hormone doc? What, what's a hormone so doctor? A hormone called? doctor is someone. An endocrinologist? Who, endocrinologist, no. Okay. I, I have found endocrinologists are great for diabetes. Mm -hmm. I work with two endocrinologists. They send me their patients for female hormones. Okay. Okay. Even male hormones sometimes. That's interesting. So I think. It's it's tough to, de you know, we are very peculiar 
kind of people here. You know, I did my training at Loma Linda, as I said, in preventive medicine. And during that training, I was asked to do my thesis. You know, we always do a thesis at the end of the last uh, year of residency on hormone uh, replacement therapy. Mm -hmm. And I did a full review of the literature. So I kind of educated myself through my readings, my uh, practice with patients over there. And then I went to some training with functional medicine uh, people like Pamela Smith is a mm -hmm. great, great, great person to, to talk to. And she knows, she has a network of maybe trainees like me. You know, she's a doctor in um, Detroit that was in charge of the class of hormones when I did my functional medicine training. So I think really look for a doctor that has some experience with hormones. Yes. And otherwise educate yourself. That's why we do this podcast. Absolutely. So we have these experts like you that come on and learn and learn to, so that you can walk into the doctor's office and say, I'm in perimenopause. I know that because I've got this, this, this. Can mm -hmm. you please do this, this, this? And unfortunately, until this field of medicine expands, and it is expanding, I think there are yes. a lot more doctors that are becoming Absolutely. way more educated because half the population is going to go through this. So okay. that, that's that's great. Okay, so you've got two more. We have done only three. Okay, so another thing would be be ready for adjustments. Don't expect to be fixed in a minute. You know, right. I always tell my patients, please be patient with me. I'm doing my best, mm -hmm. but you're, again, a moving target. I, I don't know how you're going to react. So I have patients in London already right now, the poor little one, we were fixed, we were fixed, everything was good. And then she emails me yesterday and she says, it was so good. I had three periods exactly at, at 28 days. And this month I'm already at 35 and I don't have a period. I say, Honey, relax. Right. You're a moving target at exactly. this point. So okay. just so be, be give yourself some, some exactly. grace. And then it's always my, um, my French philosophy, la joie de vivre, okay? Enjoy your life, you know. Life is too short to make it miserable. Mm -hmm. So try to take the best of that moment of your life. Yes, you're going to lose your period. Not a big deal, okay? There's so much to be done, you know. You, you're opening your life towards the future, you're going to have more freedom because your kids might be gone soon. Mm -hmm. So try to reinvent yourself. Mm -hmm. Use that as a moment of change, but for the better. For the better. Okay, la joie de vivre. Okay. You're the best. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. Reed. Thank and you so much for being here. I think women are going to really learn a lot from this. Thank and, you so much. And I'm just you know. so grateful that you would take your time to come. Well, I'm so grateful you invited me, okay? Because we need to talk to the world. You know, we in do. my little office, I cannot do much over there. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Well, thank you, Mary. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining us today on SheMD. And remember, if you want to own your own health, a good place to start is by following us on social media at SheMD Podcast and by subscribing to our show on YouTube. And don't forget, you can listen to our episodes on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. For takeaways from today's episode, visit our website, SheMDPodcast.com. We'll see you next time on SheMD. SheMD.